Yes, here we are then, folks. Very exciting day in the Mod Extra Towers because my pre-order of Storm Shadow has arrived. Woo! I've been waiting for this one for ages. It was like the figure I wanted the most out of the G.I. Joe classified range, and I'm so happy and excited to have it. And it couldn't have arrived at a better time because I'm a little bit poorly today, so that was a nice little pick-me-up to arrive on the doorstep. But here he is. Here's Storm Shadow. Standard G.I. Joe classified packaging, but striking figure right out the gate in the package look at that got this fantastic artwork along the side here and that artwork's really cool because it wraps around onto the side of the packaging you can see there how it wraps around to the side of the packaging i'm not sure i'll have to go back and check some of my older videos i don't know how many of them do that but that's really cool awesome very dynamic piece of artwork on the side of the packet there and then the other side has got the standard G.I. Joe classified information. He's the 35th figure in the line. And you've got this data card thing that you have to cross-reference against the uh, Hasbro website doicky thingamabob. Uh, so that's all pretty standard. And then the back has got this new uh, kind of whole collection artwork going on with the accumulating number of characters that are appearing in G.I. Joe classified, along with the mysterious shadowy figure in the middle. Back to the front and you get a real appreciation of once again the embarrassment of riches and accessories that the G.I. Joe classified folks have thrown in with this figure. So you get a nice and very real appreciation of all the added value that they've chucked in. So not only are you getting this great classic figure, but you've got all this lovely stuff to play with as well. So let's get into it, shall we? I've cut the tape. I'm going to go in from the bottom here. Oh, paperwork. Slide him out. There we go. Looks like it's the standard Cobra backing card on Storm Shadow there. Add that to the collection. All oh, right, here we go. All taped in again. So what have we got? We've got a couple of swords over here. Let's see if my fingernails can defeat this. My fingernails can't defeat it. That's a fact. Oh, there we go. Yes, yeah, so we've got a couple of lovely swords in here. There. Wow, nice. More tape. Ah, Someone should patent a tool for tape peeling. For nail biters, it'd make a killing. Actually, to be fair, someone's probably already done one of them. I'll Google that later. Oh, I'm in. Right, there we go. I've edited that down for the purposes of the video, but you'd be absolutely shocked to know how long it took me to get that sellotape off this bow there. Uh, is that a compound bow? Is that what they call that? Well, whatever it is, it looks awesome. And then there's an arrow to load into it. Oh, ah! There we go, there's the arrow. And then on this side, we've got his backpack with his sword sheaths and his spare arrows. Then, uh, oh, it looks like a bit of... Is that from the belt? I think that'll be from the belt. We'll have a look when we open it up. His hood. And then finally... Oh, here he is. The man himself. Oh, yeah, look at this guy. Awesome. Oh, he's a bit stiff. Oh, you're a bit stiff in the groin there, Storm Shadow. I think they might, oh, and his elbows. It's going to be a bit of hot water going on with this guy in a minute. But, yeah, there we go. Look at this. What an impressive figure. So happy, so excited. Right, I'm going to go away, give him a play, pose him up, do the usual routine. I'll be back in a couple of days to share my review thoughts. Hey, folks, before we go any further, don't forget to do the whole like and subscribe thing. I had a dream once, and that dream came true just a couple of weeks ago. I wanted so desperately to have over 100 subscribers so I could have my own YouTube URL. And I asked in one of my vids, and you wonderful, beautiful people mobilized and got me over that threshold. And I am so pleased and grateful, and massive thanks to those who did subscribe and helped me reach that dream. However, I can't rest on my laurels. We need new dreams. And now... I'm going to go for 150. Why not? And I know for fact from the stats that there's quite a number of you folks out there watching these videos who are not currently subscribed to this channel. So if you're a massive adult child nerd like me and you like all sorts of varied broad things from the wider church of nerdom, then please do consider subscribing to this channel. It would be my absolute honor and privilege to be selected by you to hit that red button and join your subscribe channels list. So before we carry on, take a second and hit that button for me. And here we go then. Here is Storm Shadow, the extremely difficult to light on camera Storm Shadow in all his bright whiteness. But here he is. The figure exists. It's real. There he is in the plastic itself. It's been like feast or famine with this G.I. Joe classified line, at least here in the United Kingdom. It all went very, very quiet 
after I'd received my Ali Viper and my bat, and then the postman has rocked up with three bat to back, which is super exciting. My Outback review is already on the channel, you're watching my Storm Shadow review, and Spirit arrived as well. So it's going to be a bit of a G.I. Joe dominated channel for a little while, but yeah, there we go. Like the old saying goes, you wait for a bus or you wait for a G.I. Joe classified figure for ages and then three come at once, literally. So I'm very excited to receive Storm Shadow. This was a figure that I had my eye on the minute they showed the digital renders way back in whatever the fan first stream was they did and i was like yes i need that look at that classic looking guy so i've been away it's been a few days now since i did the unboxing bit of this video i've posed him up been playing around taking some photographs i've had him on my little turntable lined him up in a little display with cobra commander and zartan and stuff it's all been very exciting big man child playtime for me and i'm back to share some thoughts so from this point onwards i'm going to follow my three a's rule i'm going to talk about the aesthetic so a little section on how he looks then I'm going to talk about the articulation, so a little section on how he feels, how, how well he is to work with. And then finally, the accessories. Let's talk about this embarrassment of riches, as I like to call it in the unboxing sections, uh, that come in terms of accessories with the figure. So let's not dilly-dally around. I've already chundered on enough. Let's start talking about Storm Shadow. Now, the most striking element to this figure is clearly his white ninja uniform i mean it's a bright white it's very white my son when he first saw this figure i said oh look uh, my ninjas arrived in the post he was like how does he sneak around with that white uniform on i said it's a fair point but you know equally ali vipers i suppose but it's very striking very striking and i know i talk about shelf presence a lot when i review figures and i say well this figure's got a lot of shelf presence that figure's got a lot of shelf presence this guy I'm going to have to re-establish my shelf presence scale because this guy really pops, really stands out. I've had him next to Cobra Viper and Ali Vipers and the Red Ninja and stuff and all those red, blues and browns, you know, your Zartans and your Major Bloods and stuff. This white just really leaps off the shelf, really stands out. It's, it draws your eye to him. Ali Viper, notwithstanding, um, he just, yeah, it's a very bright white. It's a, it's a white white. It's, I can't, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, so, yeah, that's great, though, because that's what we wanted. I'm a nostalgia head. I used to read Action Force comics when I was a kid here in the UK, and that evokes those nostalgic memories of what the classic Storm Shadow uniform and look was all about. So very pleased with that element of the aesthetic, regardless of how practical it truly is. But they have given it a little upgrade, as they tend to do with G.I. Joe Classified, and there's lots of other nice little touches and details in there, too. Like in the head, for example, you can see you've got these lovely little seam lines on the mask to give it some texture and some depth. And you've got this incredible level of detail in just this small section of the mask here. The vast majority of his face is obscured, but so much story is being told in the eyes there and the eyebrows. Just that very stoic, serious ninja assassin stare thing going on. And it's all, all communicated, all told in just this little window, this little section of the mask here. So in addition to things like these little seam lines and whatnot, giving the character a bit more dynamic and adding a, a more realistic element to the figure, that is just... Uh, I mean, it's the standard we've come to expect with G.I. Joe classified face sculpts, but just telling so much story in just that section there, I'm very, very pleased with, very impressed with. Then on the main body, you can see folds and creases in his uniform. You've got the nice touches here, like the leather belt and the really, really neat and tidy paint apps on his shurikens and his buckle. And of course, his little Cobra logo here on his chest. Uh, so that's a nice touch. I like this too here on the arms and the feet. We've got these wraps uh, around his wrists and then around this section here his calf and his ankle uh, in this sort of more off-white faded uh, color just again to give it a little bit of um, I don't know a bit just a bit more variety I suppose so it's not just all white all the time and you can see all the way around the legs and around the back here that texture in the trousers, the fabric texture, and the seam lines and whatnot are all present. Got this extra little bit here that you can bolt onto the back of his belt as well. This sort of flowing little wrap, tie wrap belt bit, which again, just gives it more character, more personality, which I really love. The black elements, you know, the belts and the darker, more off-white elements on the wrist and the uh, bottom of the legs here also kind of frames the figure, breaks up the white a little bit in just the right kind of way um, to make sure that it's just not overwhelmingly bright, which I think is really awesome. 
And then the musculature in the arm. I mean, look at that. I mean, he's a highly trained ninja assassin who is in peak athletic condition, and that's what you'd expect his arm to look like. But yeah, really, you know, that kind of uh, musculature uh, in the arm there is awesome. Uh, really on board with that. There are a few minor irritations, a few niggles with the aesthetic. The little kind of neck scarf thing, and while it looks good, on immediate kind of appraisal of it, it when I was posing him, it got a little bit fussy, a little bit faffy, and would fall out of place and sort of affect the articulation and the way it looked. It would sort of sit oddly and uncomfortably when I was trying to do things with him. And uh, the same again with this little bit. So what they've done in order to address this this belt kind of issue, rather than sculpting it onto the figure itself, it's this loose part here. Oh, autofocus. There we go. It's focusing on my thumb. Uh, this loose part here, which I get it from a design point of view, and it does have its benefits for sure, but I found it creeping up, and I was taking photos and then realising a bit too late that it was sort of sitting weirdly across his waist there like that. Um, so uh, while they, they, they do look good, you know, I'm talking about aesthetic right now in this section, they do look good. They uh, There are times, like just straight profile like that, yeah, it looks great, but sometimes when I was trying to take more ambitious kind of posing photos... Um, they looked a bit odd, a bit squiffy, a bit unnatural, which was a shame. So you could argue that there was a bit of a risk with Storm Shadow, really, that he could have ended up in the six-inch scale looking a bit bland, you know, with the, the the simplicity of this kind of white ninja uniform that he's known for. But the folks over at Hasbro and the G.I. Joe classified team have just found these really nice small but meaningful ways to bring that character to life give it some personality and make sure that the figure has got some depth some texture some personality to it and i'm very appreciative of that so as far as the look goes i'm all on board i think he's a great looking figure really evokes what i imagine and think of with regards to storm shadow so yeah definitely a thumbs up from mod extra with regards to the aesthetic now let's talk about then how does he feel what's the articulation like what's he like to play with Starting with above the shoulders then in the head here, I mean if you've seen a G.I. Joe classified figure, had one in hand or watched a review, this will all be very familiar because they followed the same model with regards to articulation and it's up to the usual high standard. In the head here we've got the ball at the top and then the hinge, so we've got lots of motion here. I can turn it all the way around, I can tilt, I can look down, I can look up, so yeah, all very good in the head articulation. And this little scarf doesn't get in the way too much, like I say, it's more of a, an aesthetic thing because it looks a bit uncanny and odd at times, but all very good with that respect. Then in the shoulders here, we've got the butterfly joints, and we can bring the arms up into a nice T-shape, although, word of warning to the wise, my Storm Shadow was a bit tight on this side here, like anxiety inducingly tight so i had to heat that up a little bit but uh, you know as far as action figures go that's not uncommon practice nowadays then there's a swivel here at the top of the arm we've got the double elbow and oh i forgot to mention when i was talking about aesthetic pinless joints look at that check out those elbows awesome uh, but <laughs> yeah double elbow which is good nice for the articulation although the size of his massive arms the gun show there definitely gets in the way a little bit of bringing it all the way up, but there you go. Then we've got a swivel here at the top of this kind of arm wrist guard thing, and then swivel in the hand and an up and down hinge. Uh, and interestingly enough, this is something we've not seen in G.I. Joe Classified before. Both sides of Storm Shadow's hands have got up and down hinges, whereas traditionally you have a forward and back on one hand and an up and down on the other. In the torso, we've got this joint here in the middle, just under his chest, which gives good forward ab crunch, good backwards crunch as well. And then there's a joint at the waist, which gives a bit of swivel, although a bit stiff out the box there, Storm Shadow, uh, but adds to the ab crunch a little bit as well. So that's all good. And then it's standard G.I. Joe classified leg stuff as well. We've got good splits here, although that one's a bit, a bit stiff. Good splits here. We've got the drop down joint you can see there to give a little extra little bit of motion. Thigh swivel at the top of the thigh, double knee, swivel at the top of the boot, and then the forward hinge and the rocker on the feet, giving us, once again, uh, another G.I. Joe classified figure with an outstanding range of articulation, really, if I do say so. 
I'm always very impressed with the G.I. Joe classified articulation. There's not been a figure yet where I've gone, ooh, nah, that doesn't quite work for me. Uh, it's got it all going on. So uh, it's another thumbs up on the Storm Shadow review. The articulation is great. Just be very careful and mindful of some of those stiffer joints um, that I don't often come across with G.I. Joe classified, but I have done with this one. Let's talk accessories now, and this is another aspect of the G.I. Joe Classified series that just sets it apart from the crowd for me because they always, always cram it full of this added value. What's a G.I. Joe figure without loads of accessories? And in this instance, what's a ninja without swords? <laughs> So, yeah, these are awesome. Really, really happy with the... Uh, are they called katanas? Is that the correct... Is that the correct lingo? Uh, is the shorter one given a different name because it's shorter? I don't know. I'm not a, a weapons guy. I'm not an armament guy. But take a closer look at these. These are awesome. The blades on these are really awesome. Uh, one's longer than the other, but nice, shiny, metallic paint up there to sell the, you know, the sharp bladiness of it. Also got this little... Uh, I don't know what you call it. This little trench at the back there. Little moulding line which is intentional. Um, I don't know what that's called, but it just kind of, I don't know, just really sells the bladiness of it and gives the sword a bit more personality, a bit more depth, which I'm very appreciative of. And then the handle, or the, is it hilt? Do you say hilt in uh, in sword language? It's the cobra head, look. Autofocus, come on, there you go. Uh, keeping that motif nice and alive in the G.I. Joe Classified series Cobra Figures accessories. Uh, and it's, you know, it's nice and detailed. Look at that, it's lovely. A lovely little touch there. So very happy with the swords. The shorter one, as you can see, is just a smaller replication of what's going on with that longer one. And these just slide nice and slug snugly through the hand, like so. Next up, we have the bow. Uh, I did ask in the unboxing section whether this is a compound bow. Uh, I don't know. I meant to go and Google it before I recorded this section, but that was days ago and I forgot. And now I've got to this bit and gone, oh, yeah. Is it called a compound bow? I don't know. Uh, but a lovely sculpt again. Some nice touches of detail. Got this little splash of red in there on the handle. Got the little uh, the kind of string tightening wheels. <laughs> I don't know weapons very well. But it, it looks nice and authentic. Nice and uh, decent. A good weapon. And of course, uh, another one of the chosen weapons of the Ninja Assassin. So that's really cool. There also comes with Storm Shadow a loose arrow. One single loose arrow. And on the bow... Uh, I don't know if you can see this with the black accessory on the black background, but on the bow, there's like a little groove in there so that you can press the arrow in. So when he's holding the bow, it's kept nice and in place and straight. Now, one thing I have noticed is that the bow I've found, you'll see here as I do it on camera, is a bit more challenging to get into his hand. It's not quite as simple as getting a, you know, a pistol or a rifle into one of the character's hands, but with just a little bit of manipulation of the thumb and the grip, they were very kind of tight and close together, you can get it there. Uh, and pop him in some nice arrow shooty poses with your loose arrow pressed into the groove. And one nice touch here, if, uh, if you can just see there on the hand, we've got these kind of uh, arrow drawing fingers uh, with the extra kind of protection extra element of glove there which is really nice which you can then kind of you know press the uh, end of the arrow in. then we have the backpack there again just look at the detail on that you've got the uh, flight arrow things quiver bits <laughs> i don't know the terminology uh, but there's lovely detail with the arishikagi logo on there lovely detail uh, and this is quite nice it's got a sheath for the longer sword here it's got a sheath for the shorter sword here. And then there's a little stud sticking out just there. Pop the compound bow on. Uh, is it the other way around? Ah, yes, it's the other way around. So see where the arrow groove is here? You've got to make sure that the arrow groove is facing out. And then for this loose arrow, there's a little slot just inside the quiver there so that you can slide it in. And it blends really nicely with the other arrows and then there is a peg that just fits neatly into the peg hole uh, which fits all nicely really completing the you know the finest accessories that the ninja about town needs last but by very means least we've got the hood 
Not a fan of the hood. This is a bit bobbins, in my humble opinion, but it, it's come with the figure nonetheless. It's a faff to get on and off, and then it looks a bit rubbish too. But um, I'll talk you through it. So you've got this like kind of white hood thing here. What you need to do is pop the head off, and then you need to place the head inside the hood. You put the f head in so that it's facing out the big gap, and then you pop the head back on like so. Go on, get back on there. Oh, there we are. And, yeah, there's the hood. But, I don't know, it just... This massive amount of clearance here at the top makes it just look a bit daft to me. Not not a big fan of the aesthetic of the hood. And it's all a bit of a faff to get on and off. And uh, there were a few times where I could, the head got spun round and was facing the back of the hood, and it was all a bit awkward. Yeah, so the hood, you get the hood. I'm I'm not a fan. Not for me. Horses for courses. And just for a bit of fun here, I've just popped Storm Shadow there next to the Red Ninja, so you can get a look at kind of how the figures look together next to each other. If you're anything like me, you like theme, you like to keep your stuff all sort of themed up, so I've got my ninjury folks all hanging out, because why wouldn't you? Storm Shadow here is ordering the Red Ninja into the fray, telling him what to do, because that's how they roll, you know. But uh, yeah, I'll give you an idea of the kind of sort of what you can do with that posability and articulation and putting them together and stuff. I think, yeah, they're, they're a nice little combo, these two. Uh, they work well, so yeah, just a bit of a comparison there. And here we go, a fully kitted Storm Shadow, minus the hood, Son's hood. The hood's no good, uh, but that's how I've had him posed up on the shelf. Blades out, ready for action, all ninja assassin -y style. Uh, about to leap into action and take care of some Joes. Uh, he looks really sweet, actually, um, next to the Red Ninja. I've been very pleased with that little element of my Cobra display. And I think the review speaks for itself. It is a really solid top-notch figure. G.I. Joe classified folks have done it again. Uh, these reviews are going to get boring eventually because, so far, I've been very happy with literally every single G.I. Joe classified series figure I've picked up. Um, it's just got everything that I want and need. It, the aesthetic and look is mashing together my nostalgia and the more contemporary sensibilities of a six-inch figure really, really well. They've got loads of added value with all the accessories and extra bits and bobs that come with them. I think that's really awesome. And they're extremely well articulated. I just, I, I, I wish that some of the Marvel Legends and some of the Star Wars Black Series stuff that I've been picking up lately was as well articulated as some of these. And so it's just, yeah, triple A, top notch really happy uh, this line can do no wrong or certainly can do no wrong as far as the figures are concerned i'd rather not be getting that feast or famine situation a more regular steady flow of releases of course would be appreciated by many i am certain well i'm not certain i know for fact i've read the comments <laughs> i see people on the streams that's uh that's like the wild west in there when they do a stream jesus so there we go storm shadow very happy very pleased to have him in my collection uh what extra recommends?